So this is part three of the tutorial, and that is specifically how do you get those backed up files off of your VMware server and onto an external drive. It would seem like a simple thing to do on your VMware machine, just plug in a big USB or plug in an external hard drive through the USB. And while you can do that, and I've done that and gotten those USBs to be recognized by your VMs using the pass-through feature, it's a little bit buggy, a little bit unreliable, especially after reboots, and it's just not a good thing that works smoothly. But more importantly is I could not get the mounting to work correctly inside VMware. So to actually just physically copy files off of the VMware it was problematic. Another issue is that am I going to be running a cron jobs on there? Am I going to be adding a lot of scripts on there more and more to my VMware server? And what if I have downtime or have an issue and I need to reinstall? Um, can I recover those easily? Can I get those back? It just seemed to be making things more and more complicated. So I really just couldn't find a good way to get those backed up files off. Now, what we're talking about specifically are three files for each VM, and that's created by the program XSI, which will create three files. One is a flat VMDK, one is a very small VMDK, and one is a very small file uh, with a VMX. And the VMX is the description of the server, and that is the things like the CPU number, the RAM size, the, all of those details you see when you manage your VM uh, server. Now, how do you get those three off of there? Uh, seemed easy, was not hard, uh, was not easy at all. But then I thought of this page, and this is the page that you see when you log into your VMware server, and you can, you probably recognize it. Um, there's no password needed to just to get here. Uh, and it has a link on here to download your uh, vSphere remote administrator uh, program, your EXE to do that. But more importantly for me, it has this browse data store in the host inventory. So you can actually click here and you will be browsing through your hard disk. Now you need a password. I've already input my password so it let me in. Uh, but these are actually my hard disks. And you can see here I have a list of six hard disks. And if I jump back to my diagram of my server setup, you can see that I do have six hard disks because two hard disks is one RAID 1 array. These two hard disks are one RAID 1 array. And then four hard disks are being used for backup. Remember, a weekly, weekly, monthly, monthly, even odd. So that's six total right there and that's exactly what I'm looking at when I'm browsing here. Now if I go into one of these backup directories you can see that I have a number of directories that have a date stamp on them and so this would be for the uh, daily one and this would be the I think we're looking at six one this is the odd so I've got uh, 6 1 and 6 3 and then 6 5 6 7 6 9 I can go into any one of those and now I can see each one of the directories is one of the VMs and then if I go into one of those directories these are the actual files that were made by the backup program but the backup script I should say and that script is the XSI script so that XSI backup script will create these three files. VMDK, another VMDK, and a VMX. And you can see the big one, of course, is the VMDK flat file, which is going to be all of the data. Now, how to get this? Well, if you're in the web page, you can just right-click and save link as, and you will copy over to the machine you're accessing from. Uh, and then, of course, you can specify where to save to, right? Now, I want to remind you that my setup here has this server here and then right next to the server inside the same room I have this gigabyte. Gigabyte calls this a brick, bricks, B-R-I-X. These little tiny mini computers, uh, Intel's called NUC, uh, N-U-C I think, new something computing error or something like that. So these little tiny things look like they wouldn't be very helpful. They certainly wouldn't be something you want to be gaming on, but man, these really work great for me. A great price, and they run a Linux install perfectly fine. 
This machine here then is where I'll have a cron job. That cron job will run the get commands. Now the get commands I'm using wget. So of course this machine I don't want to manually from here be accessing the web site inside the server. Rather what I do is I just automate it to use wget. So from this machine it wgets to the server and then requests each one of those uh, backed up VM files. So three per, per VM. Now I limit this server's VMware to only uh, allow access from this IP. So I'm not just letting any machine come in with a wget command. Also I have the keys exchanged so that you don't have to have a password. So it can all be run through a cron job. So this little bricks gigabyte machine, this Fedora machine, will run a, run a cron job which will be wget. wget will log in to the server and then it'll just pull down those backed up files just like this uh, and then pull them over to the to the gigabyte small uh, machine the bricks machine I think it's called now of course the bricks machine only has a small SSD so it's not going to be able to hold anything but it does have external hard drives. So I've got external hard drives all over here. I've got a, uh, one of these external hard drive holders that actually can hold two hard disks at once. Once, So I put in some uh, Western Digitals in there and load them up. I've got one two terabyte and another four terabyte. And so I can bring those right over there and put them under the hard disk. Now, how I handle the uh, date stamping is, you know, another issue. Do you want, how many do you want to keep on this external? And then once this external fills up, the beauty is you just pop it out, take another external hard disk, pop it in, and there you go. So the way to get your key files that you've backed up, again, how did you back them up? You use the XSI command uh, scripts, and what did they do? They created this really great situation where locally in your VMware server on a hard disk someplace you've got these three files for each VM uh, that you've created a VMDK, another v VMDK and a VMX and you just pull them down with wget. The only difficulty there is you have to make your wget you know secure because you're going to need a password to get into your server you don't want to be doing that manually so to automate it you have to get your key set up or you have to include the password inside the wget command, but then make sure that your machine, both the small machine and your VMware machine, are not accessible from outside because, uh, you know, then things might be exposed. So you bring that right over here. And again, you don't want this machine to be accessible from just anywhere either because then people could grab your, you know, some bad guys could actually grab your servers off of these, these machines here. And you could do more. You could actually have these machines, these externals, and this machine turn on and off through BIOS at certain times. So during the backup time, they turn on, and then they run their uh, cron job, and then when it's done, it turns off. And the beauty here is it's all local. So this is in the exact same room. It's on the local network. Now, um, run, it doesn't have to be in the local, it could be somewhere else, but of course you're going to run into bandwidth problems. So because it's local, it can go really fast. And I can get down all of my six or seven servers, VMs, get all the information. And every time you do that, you're grabbing a fresh backup because the, the program XSI, each time it makes the backup, is taking a fresh uh, a snapshot but it's not a snapshot it's the whole server for that time so I'm doing it daily so every day I've got one it's not just the difference or the Delta it's the whole thing now you may say hey well, it wouldn't it be better just to have the Delta and then you know save a lot of trouble my goal is if there's a problem if something goes down I can just take the virtual machine plug it back in go or take the virtual machine go somewhere else another hardware another server or to the cloud and just launch it right away. No fuss, no mess, no chaos. So that's the way to get it off. The key being you can access it through the website management and then use wget. Now, the next question comes up, 
how do I get those files to another location off-site because you should have your backups off-site. Of course, we could use sneakerware, pop out the hard disk carrier, but how do you get it off over the internet and make it manageable when we're talking about hundreds of gigabytes of data? That's the next tutorial.